so much for joining me today. So, as usual, I jumped the gun and I got ahead of myself and um, started in a new little project. I'm out here in the laundry room at my house. My house is old. It's it's uh, where I live. This this house was built in 1942, and um, this used to be the outside of the house. This was the outside door on the back, and they added this on. And um, as you can see, it's a it's a rainy day today, kind of chilly, not really much to do. I'm home alone, so I took a trip to Lowe's, <laughs> and I bought a one-gallon paint can and some brackets here. And I've already started building a uh, one-gallon paint can wood stove and man i just started building this thing and i thought man how come i'm not videotaping this you know i mean i need to be so i decided to go ahead and grab the camera and get it set up and show you guys what i'm doing so this is a one gallon paint can stove and i was inspired to do this uh by another video that i watched and i'll try to put a link for that down below um and uh anyway it's just wood wood stoves are just fun you know i mean I like them, and I've got some plans for this one. Um, I've only got a few dollars in it. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun. So let me show you what I've done so far. This is just a simple one-gallon paint can, and uh, I picked this up for $5 at Lowe's. There's a lid. And um, right here on the side, if I can get this out, is where, where the handle was right here. See, this was a little handle it was on the paint can I pulled that off and I drilled out uh, the uh, holes and made them bigger and I actually put some of these screws that you would put in real thin walls butterfly screws I put some of these butterfly screws in there see and you can see by looking across over here at the other side that's the actual result on the inside and this is what it looks like on the outside, see? So I was able to go ahead and put the brackets on both sides. Got a screw in there, put a little washer. So now she sits up pretty good. And the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bracket, which is just a straight flat, flat bracket. I'm going to mount it right here. So that's going to give me the support uh, that I need. This is probably enough, but the problem is it has a tendency to want to kind of you know, move, see, you know, like that. And uh, if I get some wood in there, I don't want it to get too heavy and, you know, uh, fall down. So I'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up here and go ahead and put another hole right there and put this bracket in there. And then when I'm finished, I've got, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I've got a little chimney here I'm going to make for it. Um, I bought this at Lowe's. It's, it's a little large for it, I think. I wish that uh, I had something more um, on the lines of, you know, like this. But if I did that, I'd have to have a whole bunch of these little cans to make a little chimney. But I may just, you know, go ahead and put that on there for now. I'm not too sure. But anyway, um, I'll let you all know the further along in the project that I get. So my workbench today is... Uh, it's just a piece of wood on top of the old washer and dryer. <laughs> hey, it works. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see if we can't get this straight. And I want to mark that. Get out the old black magic marker here. I'll do the other side when I'm done because I want to make sure that I've got it uh, good and level. So let's go ahead and get a drill bit. It's a little dull. Yeah, that'll work though. That'll screw in. I'm 
going to try to use these nuts for a little spacer because there's going to be there's going to be some space between uh, the top of this bolt and the can because the bottom is a little bit more flush. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so I have a bolt in there. I've got a large nut that slips over top of the bolt so that it fills up the space, the gap, because this front had a space. That way it's going to be a little bit more even, see, like that. And then on the inside, if you can see that, all the way back there, get my flashlight. On the inside, if you look back up in there, you see that the bolt comes through. I have another oversized nut that slips over it with a washer and then the nut that fits on the bolt on the inside. Pretty simple. So now all I have to do is tighten this up and I've got to get a real small bolt to fit in here. So I can close that up and then I'm going to have one side done. Okay, so I found a short uh, bolt and a washer because the hole is a little bit bigger. And I've got a, a nut here for the back and another washer I'm going to put on here. Locking washer. Put that on the front. Everything I'm using, pretty much except for the paint can and a few other things, I just had laying around here at the house. So, try not to be too expensive with this. <laughs> One side complete. Now I gotta get the other side to match it. Exactly. Try to make it sit level here. Got my other bolt. Just gonna unscrew it. You guys see my little little nuts and bolts tray, just a bunch of little miscellaneous junk I've been collecting. <laughs> this is so, so random. Everything I do is just kind of... You know... Fly by night. Alright, let's throw the other hole. It's got to go right. Right below that line right there. That's where I want it to be. I hope I'm right. I want it to be good. All right. Now, just like the other side, we got a bolt, and then we're going to uh, flip through this. Got another oversized nut that slips all the way on. I'm using for my spacer. Okay, that goes in there like that. The bit that I used is just tight enough for me to be able to screw that bolt in there, which is good. That means it's tight. So I'm going to do the same thing to this side that I did the other side. I'm not going to bore you guys with it. When I'm done, I'll let you see it. 
All right, there we go. The legs are on. Here's the inside, if you can see it. And believe it or not, it's it's actually even. Nice and steady. So the next step is, I've got to figure out a way to make a little door on this and some type of a vent so that I can adjust the airflow. So I'm gonna give that some thought and when I figure out what I'm gonna do, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've been thinking about a way that I can cut a door out of this lid. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and tap this lid on. This is the lid that goes on the paint can. I wanna tap this lid on real tight so that it's permanent. And I bought these hinges at Lowe's and I was going to try to figure out a way, you know, that I could make a little door, cut out a little door, so I could feed it with the firewood and make like a little damper. And I came up with this great idea, and you guys are going to love it. Altoid tin. I'm going to put that right there, and guess what? Well, put it like this. <laughs> and there's my door, see? So if I can figure out a way that I can attach this to that and cut the hole out of both of them, then I'll have a door that I can open and shut. Then I need to figure out a way that I can make a little damper, uh, a little, some vents on the front here. Or uh, maybe I'll put this to one side and I'll put the vents over here. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with that. But it only took me about five minutes to think about this. And I think it's a great idea for a door. And um, so I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to give it some thought. And I'll turn it back on and let you guys know what my decision is. Okay, sorry guys, I got ahead of myself again. I decided to go ahead and drill four holes so I can take the tin snips and cut the back of this Altoids tin out. So that's all I'm doing right now. Just This is an ancient drill. <laughs> I don't think anybody even has a 14.4 volt. Probably had that thing 20 years. But it works. All right, now I'll... Take the tin snips and I'll cut out between these holes and make an opening in the back of this. Ah, found these on the highway. They were broken. They were broken, kind of busted up. And I'll tell you who fixed them for me and straightened them back up. And that was uh, my, my buddy Ronnie, my, my best friend Ronnie over at uh, After 5 Auto. If you guys don't know his channel, go there and check it out if you like to watch cars being rebuilt. He's rebuilding the 66 Chevelle right now. He fixed these for me. So thank you, buddy. I know. Somebody's going to tell me I could have done it a different way. That's all right. Um, fly by night. Guys, since I decided to build this thing, it's been less than an hour. I ran down the lows. I picked up a few things. I came back, and I'm working, okay? So this is all flying by the seat of my pants. Get a big chunk out of the way. There we go. Let's see what we're doing. Well. That's an opening. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can clean it up a little bit. And when I get ready to attach it, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I got this idea after I turned off the camera. So what I did was pieces that I cut out, these little pieces of tin, I had two of these. I took one of them, I took the tin snips and I cut it long ways like this. Then I bent it over and used it on the inside right here. See that? To make it smooth and I pinched it on both sides. 
with a pair of pliers. So that's going to make the hole nice and smooth inside. And it's also going to keep everything, uh, it's also going to help keep the door on. So now i got to, probably have to cut up a couple of more Altoids tins. I'm going to trim out this and the top and the bottom. And we'll see what that looks like. Now we'll get the top and the bottom. Here's my other donor Altoids tin. Lids come off real easy. Really cool. You can, you can do a lot with Altoids tins. They're a lot of fun. I think I'll cut this one up a little different, try to make it easier on myself. Aha! Uh -huh. Snapped right in there. Have a hole inside, it's nice and smooth. Crimp this a little bit more. So she holds it good and tight. Here's our front door. Snap shut. Snaps to open. That's where the wood goes. Now, got to figure out something. Well, I got that little off, didn't I? <laughs> it's not exactly exactly in the center of that, but that's all right. It'll be it'll be all right. Put it on here and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Once I pound that lid in. I pick it up so you guys can see that. But there's the door. Now ventilation. I thought but I could even use some of this extra tin. I could cut some holes out big enough right here. Maybe drill some holes in and just make a little piece that I could maybe pivot in and out so that I could uncover uh, the holes as I need them. So I'm gonna think about that and then we'll go ahead and execute that. Okay, so here's what I have decided to do. I think probably for right now, for the time being, instead of having the door open up this way, I think I'm going to just go ahead and turn the whole lid 
like this, I'm going to have the door open up this way so I can feed it and there's still plenty of room for the fire down there below because I didn't exactly put it center. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put the lid on this way and then that way I can leave the lid open for ventilation. And then if I decide that I want to uh, uh, stop the airflow just a little bit, then what I'll do is I'll close this lid partial and I think what I'll do is I'll put a screw in here in the top that will actually go through and then that'll stop the lid see like that see so I can close the lid let the wood burn a little bit slower and still have enough ventilation to be able to have a little bit of a draw and some airflow in there we're gonna try it and see how it goes if it doesn't work the cool part about it is all I gotta do is pat, pop the lid off and I can make this thing open up any way I want I thought about doing it like this right here too and having it open up from the bottom so we're going to try it from the top that way I can put a little screw in here and I can actually adjust the screw by pulling the screw out or in I can decide how how uh, much of an opening that I want in this lid because it's just going to be hanging there so I think we'll try that okay so I decided to just go ahead and go with this a uh, large four inch galvanized chimney I'm going to put on here um, simply because if I do decide that I want to use this in a shelter which I don't recommend to anyone I'm not recommending that if I decide to do it then that's on me but I don't want anybody coming back and saying you know that I inspired you to build your own wood stove and put it in a shelter and your shelter burned down and you got hurt so I'm just making that disclaimer right now, okay? But if I do decide to use this in a shelter, I don't want any smoke. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I got this perforated piece here for the bottom. And I'm going to just mark it right here on top as best as I can with my black magic marker. And then the fun part is going to be trying to cut that circle out with my tin snips um, and make it neat enough to where it's going to be. It's going to look halfway decent on the outside and um, be tight enough to not uh, allow smoke to, to come through there a whole lot. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that now. Okay, here's a tip. That's a good start. That's not big enough for that, as you can tell. That's just not going to fit. But I'd rather have it a little bit small, and then I'll just keep cutting it out until I get a nice, good, snug fit, okay? One thing is definitely going to happen is that you'll see that space right in here. So you're going to have to flatten out your can a little bit up here in the front and then back there to back in order to get these flanges uh, flattened out on the inside of the can so you have good seal but that's not a problem it doesn't really hurt the way it looks it'll still function real good so let's get her knocked down in there and then we'll start bending the flanges okay so what I ended up doing was reaching in there with my hand and bending them up just a little bit once I got them up I turned it upside down like this put this on the bottom and I took my little ball peen hammer in there smashed them down real good and I was holding both sides of the can so that it would flatten out a little bit so that it would make a halfway decent seal on the side now most of the smoke is just going to go ahead and come out of the larger hole and um, if I need to seal that up, you know, with something, you know, then I will. But we'll see how it does. I'm just curious to see if it's straight. And it looks like it. it's pretty straight. So there it is. And now I've got a couple of pieces here. I've got this piece, which will just go on like this. And then I've got this piece which actually moves to make it any make it any way you want. 
make a straight piece out of it or make an elbow out of it or whatever you want. And if I need that for something, you know, then I can always put that on the other end too. So if I'm using it in a shelter. But for right now, all we're going to do is just put this piece right here on. Actually, this piece moves too. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. I just thought I picked up an elbow and I didn't. So let me get it straight so that it makes a nice elbow. I'll put it on there. So, there we go. There you have it. Okay, so with everything else being done, with the exception of uh, putting some type of a little grate down here at the bottom so that there's a little airflow for building the fire on, once again, Altoid tins are going to uh, come to the rescue. I've got the lid left over. From the last one that I cut the base up um, to use <clears throat> on the front so I'm going to drill holes in this and I'm going to take the tops off of one maybe two of these and these are going to fit right in here like that with the holes drilled in them that's going to make kind of a little bit of a grate for me so that I could put build a fire in there and have a little bit of airflow on the bottom so that uh, it'll keep the fire going Okay, so the next thing I did was I took the bottom of one of these Altoid tins that I had left over and I just slid it on all four corners, kind of stretched it out just a little bit to make like a little bit of an ashtray. And then these just fit right on top like this inside of the stove. And that just helps to uh, support those lids just a little bit better for that airflow for when I build a fire. But guys, there you have it. There's the paint can stove right there. One gallon paint can stove with an Altoy tin door with a screw handle that adjusts and you screw it in. It, it opens it up for airflow. So we're gonna have to wait for a day when it's not quite so rainy so we can try it out. I don't have a shelter set up outside, and uh, my front porch is right by the main road, and it's so loud, there's no way I could possibly do it under there. So possibly tomorrow afternoon, maybe when I get home from church and all the activities of the day, maybe we can take this thing outside, and uh, we'll go ahead and put some sticks in there. We'll start off with some hot pine, of course, and uh, or some lighter pine, whatever you want to call it. Put that in there, and we'll see what happens. But for right now, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good night.